Hi, I'm Jonathan Lipp, and today we would like to welcome to Full Compass Wolfgang Frasne. Did I get it right? I did. Fre uh, Fresne. <laughs> Fresne. Uh, to, to Full Compass. And um, Wolfgang, I'd, I'd like to ask you about two things. Wolfgang is uh, in charge of Neumann, which is a very prestigious brand. It's a brand that we're very, very proud to sell. But first off, uh, I would like to know a little bit about you and your background and uh, what, what brought you to Neumann. And then a little bit, short bit about Neumann's history and the direction that you're trying to take for your company and uh, what we um, may be looking for in, in the future from the company. Mm -hmm. Okay, so shall I start with how I got into the company Neumann? Or? Well, how about a little bit about your own background first? Okay, know? well, uh, my original idea to uh, start an own business or go into any kind of business was uh, by far not to deal with audio technology or something like what I'm doing in these days. Um, originally, I wanted to become a dentist. And uh, when I finished school, um, my grades were not so brilliant that it was good enough to go to the university without a waiting time, mm -hmm. some semesters of waiting time. So I thought to myself, well, I should do something to connect myself to any kind of profession. So why don't I start with an economic background, which even as a dentist is a useful thing to have. So I started out with an international company selling, well, um, office supplies, nothing which is so fancy. But um, at the same time, I was having uh, piano lessons since my seventh year. So I was always connected somehow to the world of music. And uh, so I made my way through a few companies. Among those was, for example, the Zeiss company, Lenses oh, and Zeiss, Planetariums. Yes. Mm -hmm. I used to work there for seven years, and I was working for an international advertising agency for a few years with totally different customers, not from the audio industry. And then suddenly there came this um, job opportunity to join Neumann. And of course, Neumann was something which told me something because I was using these microphones in studios and in my private music. I wouldn't call it a career, but in my private activities in conjunction with music. And uh, so I got to start with, with Neumann. And uh, ever since then, I fell in love with it. And uh, you see, here I am 20 years later still um, or even more deeply involved in the music business in these days. Mm -hmm. um, short history on uh, Neumann. I mean, it's a long history. How old is the company? The company was founded in 1928 mm -hmm. by George Neumann. And um, the uh, company was uh, first starting out with the first industrially produced condenser microphone, the so-called CMV3, or here in America, people know it with a nickname, the Neumann bottle. Mm -hmm. um, and that microphone uh, was a remarkable step forward. Um, not that there haven't been any other condenser microphones in 1928, but not in an industrially produced and manufactured uh, way. And uh, George Neumann invented a lot of things which uh, made it much easier and more cost effective to do this. And uh, so this microphone was sold for many, many years. And I mean, I think a lot of people who, who will see this interview and people here at Full Compass for certain know a lot of these legendary products from Neumann, like the U47, U67, and why well, you name them, all these very well-known tube microphones, M49s, M50s, and so on. And, uh, all the talents which you know from your youth or um, well, all the other people here in the company know from their earlier years um, have been working with Neumann microphones and created a tremendous amount of their career by the use of Neumann microphones in professional recording studios. And I think in these days mm, Neumann microphones are one of the mm, most well-known microphone brands in the audio industry. But of course, Neumann stands for much more than just microphones. In the history of the company, uh, Neumann also manufactured disc cutting lathe systems when the vinyl discs were uh, common uh, in the world of music. And um, 
we made mixing consults mm -hmm. um, f mainly for the German broadcasting market, not so much here in America. Yeah, they had ashtrays built in, I remember. <laughs> 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 they were customized, that's yeah, for really certain, yeah. that's right, yeah. But those were very expensive animals. Mm -hmm. uh, our mixing consoles ranged from, let's say, the, the cheaper ones from half a million Deutschmarks up to five million Deutschmarks, depending on, well, the facility, the size, and the mm -hmm. number of channels and mm -hmm. so on. Um, George Nyman uh, died, when was that? It was, it was in the 70s. I don't even know the mm -hmm. exact year, sorry. but that's So his, uh, his family ran the company for a while. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. family-owned until 1991. Mm -hmm. And on the f uh, 1st of uh, January 1991, um, Sennheiser took over. The Sennheiser family is also a... Uh, well, German-based, family-owned business, and as a company, it's mm -hmm. a family-owned business uh, in the professional audio industry and uh, much bigger than Neumann. Um, and the f Neumann family, the children of George Neumann, mm -hmm. who inherited the company from their father, didn't want to run the company themselves anymore. They wanted to sell it to somebody who is already established in the professional audio industry, mm -hmm. is based in the same country in Germany, and not anywhere in the Far East or so. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was a logical conclusion to talk to the Sennheiser family and uh, George Neumann and the uh, and, and Fritz, uh, Professor Fritz mm -hmm. Sennheiser knew each other anyway from, uh, you know, AES in the events and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, when Sennheiser took over, uh, some of the facilities were moved into the Sennheiser facilities, some, some mm -hmm. stayed in Berlin? Right. Um, that was in the early 90s, after the takeover in 91, that, of course, Sennheiser had to um, re revisit all the business procedures in the company. Does it make sense to keep a company in the center of Berlin after the wall came down in 1989? That was probably very valuable real estate at that time. That I was too valuable to... Uh, stay there without putting it on our customer's shoulder by, mm -hmm. well, increasing prices. But I think a customer doesn't want to pay for our rent. He wants to pay for a good microphone. Mm -hmm. So it was logic to think about um, relocating a part of the company into the already existing Sennheiser location where they um, had all the machines, machines and all the facilities they need to manufacture microphones, except for the people making Norman microphones. Mm -hmm. So there was an offer to a number of people in our manufacturing site in Berlin to change from Berlin to near Hanover, where Sennheiser is located, and start working there and still keep their jobs. And some did, some did not. And so the transfer took place. My, my, my perception was that although Neumann was known for high quality, that uh, the consistency actually improved eventually af after the move. It's simply because Sennheiser had much more contemporary facilities. That's one. Th that's one part of the story. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, since Neumann had uh, changed into the Sennheiser Group, Neumann has. Well, tremendously increased the business in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's not the same Neumann company as it used to be mm -hmm. in the early 90s. But you are right. I mean, the synergy mm, which you gain from a merge with uh, such a great company like Sennheiser and Neumann is, of course, a very powerful uh, sum of parts on mm -hmm. both ends, which end up... Uh, well, if you could say one plus one is three instead mm -hmm. of two in this case. And um, I think what we learned from and with each other, which means the people from the former Sennheiser company and the former Neumann company now merging together into one um, group of companies. These are still independent companies. Neumann is still not only a brand, but an own company with a different location mm -hmm. in Berlin. But what we learned from each other is the respect among mm -hmm. each other for the engineering work uh, on both sides, for the marketing capacity mm -hmm. on both mm -hmm. ends, and for these, uh, we, we develop the admiration for two powerful brands which are having a long tradition. Neumann is 
the only daughter as a daughter company, which mm. is 18 years older than her mother. I always must mention that for a moment. Um, but um, both companies have this long history, and I think this is mm -hmm. something very unique. But by uh, keeping them as separate entities, uh, you've managed to retain some of the separate character that was still very important to the Neumann brand rather than it simply being a, a nameplate of yeah. a Sennheiser. And um, the, we always say, even internally, when we visit the Sennheiser factory or vice versa, people from the factory are coming to the Neumann headquarters in Berlin, we always say afterwards, these are two different entities, two different kinds of, mm, well, company cultures but they get along with each other very well. This mm -hmm. is just that we have a very good understanding for each other and for each other's business processes. But one fact is, for example, Neumann is smaller than Sennheiser, so the communication is faster. Decisions are sometimes made within an hour, where in a bigger enterprise like Sennheiser, you need just to well, coordinate this between departments and so on. This is not better or uh, not good, it's just different. And um, when we communicate with each other, we still have also different philosophies when it comes to the character of sound. Um, when peop uh, a, a Sennheiser customer who wants to have a Sennheiser microphone for a certain application, um, once this kind of kind of neutral sound, what Sennheiser stands for, mm -hmm. um, not neutral in the sense of a measurement microphone, but neutral compared to the more colored sound um, within the world of Neumann microphones. Mm -hmm. And um, that should remain so. I mean, why should we mix two brands and, um, well, just f uh, use two brands instead of really two companies with their two own concepts? Mm -hmm. Um, Neumann is, uh, in my perception, a very interesting mix of tradition and leading edge technology. They are both there. And uh, the, uh, I think the first practical digital microphones on the market are, are Neumann products. Um, how do you see the future of that transition in, in, into uh, digital microphones? Up to now, I think there is still some kind of, or there used to be a kind of hesitance to switch from analog mics to digital mics because people didn't see the real advantage. Why should I use a digital microphone when my analog collection works so nicely and I can do everything I want? The real advantage of this digital microphone technology lies, for example, in uh, applications like in the broadcast market where you have mm -hmm. digital networks where you have uh, server-based files on which the journalist works, with which the, the journalist works, and uh, the people from sound engineering in different locations, and they all um, use, need, need to have the uh, material in digital format. So converting the analog signal into a digital signal right behind the microphone capsule instead of having an A to D converter somewhere in the signal processing chain changes the whole process and workflow. And I think the magic word is the workflow, in, especially in the broadcast market where it's... Well, you could certainly get a better match between the converter and the microphone. That's one with thing. With it engineered that way, certainly. That's one thing. And uh, in, in live applications, um, you have, of course, a much uh, lighter weight to carry. I mean, mm. it's a Cat5 cable for 90 channels is a different uh, thing than a multi-core for 64 channels mm -hmm. with uh, XLR connectors on both ends, and it's just a lot of copper you carry around. Mm -hmm. And that means uh, you save time and money, and it's not so fragile, it doesn't break so easily, that uh, Cat5 cable. And as I said, it's the network capability when you work on Ethernet or something mm -hmm. like this. Well, well, of course, there's the advantage of being able to remote control the microphone, which yeah. is extremely rare in analog microphones. That's right, and it has been done by CTV in Canada, for example, during the uh, last year's Winter Olympics. They had microphones in different ap um, locations where the sport events took place, and they could easily control each pattern in the microphone 
from the central headquarters in, in, in their well in their facilities. So the ability to control how much ambience versus primary sound you may be picking up from a position where you might actually be able to hear it properly. Right. And where you have yeah. a specialist who can do it. Yeah. The journalist who is interviewing somebody doesn't it's not his job to pay attention to this the settings of the microphone. Mm -hmm. The sound engineer in the studio is trained to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's independent from the location. So you can remotely control signals coming from those microphones. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that that's really exciting. Now, uh, recently uh, Neumann has um, gotten into the control monitor business. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, it's about six years ago when uh, Sennheiser purchased a company called Klein & Hummel, um, a very distinct um, um, loudspeaker manufacturer um, from Germany, and uh, the distinctive is the right word, right? Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, um, from Germany, and um, that company was uh, was for sale. So Sennheiser said it's, not, it's a nice addition to the, the word of Sennheiser products, and uh, so they bought Klein and & Hummel, and after three years, three and a half years, they realized the brand Klein & Hummel is not strong enough in the international market to really uh, call it a sales company. So um, the products were great, but uh, not many people knew about it. The quantities were low, so the costs were high, so pricing was a critical issue. So it was uh, easy to think about a, another scenario, what Sennheiser could do with this product range within the Sennheiser group. So they split, they had split the uh, products into two segments. One is the so-called uh, installed sound range of products. And the installed sound range um, is more the bigger speakers for stage use and for, for events like that. Um, that is now going under Sennheiser, and we will see installed sound um, loudspeakers and models uh, in the future coming from Sennheiser, Sennheiser branded. And um, the studio monitor business, which uh, was already existing under Klein & Hummel, was, as I said, just too small. But quality-wise, it was very good, uh, came under my wings. So mm -hmm. we took this, um, in we integrated this into the Neumann um, company and uh, this is now a new business segment for my mm -hmm. And having done so, we have taken some models um, and uh, reviewed the technology being used, the engineering part of it. And um, well, what we have now here is the first two way monitor, the so called KH120. KH shows that there is a derivative from the former Klein and Hummel company. We don't hide that. But the the texture, the handwriting on the product is Neumann now, and that uh, is easy to uh, to hear when you just listen to the speakers. And um, a lot of things have changed. The way we manufacture them is uh, very different from what it used to be before, and the quantities are different, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you're building them more efficiently now, so they can be priced competitively with other speakers in, in, in the higher quality range. Yeah. Yes. Um, I can tell you that uh, uh, I just additioned uh, a, a pair of them and not only did they sound very nice, uh, it is one of the first speakers that I've auditioned that there was no desire to turn it up louder. It, mm -hmm. it, it uh, sounded good at even moderate volumes, which is not always the case with, with many loudspeakers. I didn't feel like I needed to turn it up to hear detail. Mm -hmm. uh, the detail was, was, was a present. And I think as a recording engineer, uh, that's a very desirable trait because it's, it's a good way to avoid listener fatigue. Which right, you know. right, that's true. And I mean, we listened, I mean, we are in professional recording studios almost every day and we mm -hmm. listen very carefully to the requirements and demands of sound engineers and people working in the studios in different countries. And uh, we changed a few patterns on the speaker, on this KH120. It's just the first model, a two-way speaker 
but it goes down to 52 hertz and it goes up to 21k and it has got 112 uh, uh, db so it's not a silent device but mm -hmm. what what's even more important is i mean you have you have listened to them today without even using a subwoofer you have the feeling of a very full bodied sound and as it is not uh, colored like on the microphone side where you can just change the frequency diagram a little bit by filter functions in the electronics and so on. You can do that on the microphone side to create a certain nice sound, what people consider to be the typical warm Neumann sound. Mm. On the other hand, where we have uh, the studio monitor, you should not just uh, change uh, the signal which comes from the recording, otherwise the sound engineer has a problem to judge whether his recording is done the right way or if he, sh if he should change something in post-production. So mm -hmm. the studio monitor should be as neutral as possible. And what you heard today was an uncolored sound of the full frequency range. Mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and, and that may be one of the reasons they, they were so pleasant to listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, it's, a, it's always a challenge for a recording engineer to make judgments. Um, when you're shopping for a high fidelity speaker, you may listen to five or six speakers and pick the one you like the best for the kind of music that you, that you listen to. But it's not necessarily a good reference to make judgments mm -hmm. in making a recording with. And that's always been a problem. Uh, my first control monitors in our studio in 1971 had so much presence, extra presence to them, even though they were a professional speaker, that mixes on, when listened to on, on many other speakers, mm. sounded dull, mm. even though they, they sounded delightful in our control room. Yeah. And we realized we had an issue. This, mm. this was an issue. Mm. So colored microphones and neutral loudspeakers make a lot of sense. Yeah, so best input and best output, that's what we always yeah. say about it. Anything else you'd like to talk about uh, as far as the future of uh, Neumann is concerned? I can, if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you are <laughs> looking for. Um, well, mm -hmm. in the history of the company, we have done so many different things other than just microphones and now speakers. Uh, with our concert and disc cutting lay systems, we, we gained a lot of experience in signal processing and all the surrounding engineering which comes with that. And of course, we would like to um, introduce further products, if not product lines, which are uh, reflecting this and using this kind of know-how and te technology. And uh, Norman has always been a um, innovation leader, technology leader, when it came to new product ideas. Even when these product ideas were considered to be totally new and um, not considered to be liked by the people in the first year or two years. Um, you will see what we are doing with the digital microphones now is such an example. We have developed this technology almost nine years ago and we are now selling these products into the market. There is a demand from the market now. Belonging to the Sennheiser Group, where we have an even wider know-how of different product categories, such as headphones and things like that. It is not uh, too much uh, when I say, well, we might uh, make use of this know-how in the Sennheiser Company Group and um, use that synergy effect also in other product categories um, to not use the Neumann brand as a sales tool, but to use the Neumann know-how in sound engineering and convert it into products which we can, with even more power, um, engineer and manufacture and sell within the Sennheiser Group under the name of Neumann in this case and under the engineering power of um, our engineers in Berlin, but still with a lot of uh, synergy with our colleagues from the Sennheiser factory. Well, thank you very much for your time. Th thank you for visiting Full Compass and, and visiting with our uh, customers here on, uh, in, in the video format. And uh, please visit us again. We'd really appreciate it. I might pick you up on that. I like it to be at Full Compass. Thank you. <laughs>